Hello, baseball fans. This is Anthony with BBSN, and we are back tonight with a Strat Time Machine replay featuring the 1922 St. Louis Browns in 1977. And this will be game number 19 of this replay. And currently the Browns who took the place of the 77 Blue Jays have a record of 14 and four in this replay, which uh, would have put them at this point in the season in first place in the American League East, three and a half games ahead of the Milwaukee Brewers. And the team that replaced Toronto was nine and nine at this point and in third place, two and a half back. So the uh, Browns had a little uh, winning streak, a little hot streak going, took uh, Six of seven from the Yankees and Red Sox before losing the opener of this series uh, to the uh, Indians behind a finely pitched game by Wayne Garland. So they are back and looking to get back on the winning track in game two tonight. And our starting lineups for the Browns, you know them, you love them, pretty much the same as it has been most of the replay. Tobin and right field leading off, followed by Frank Ellerby at third, George Sisler at first, Ken Williams in left, Baby Doll Jacobson in center, Marty McManus in at second. Behind the plate, Hank Severide and Chick Shorten in the designated hitter role. And we will have uh, some fun facts about Chick Shorten as we go through this tonight. Uh, and bringing up the rear of the batting order will be shortstop Wally Gerber. And for the Indians, some uh, <coughs> strange things. They um, this is their actual as-played lineup uh, for this game against Toronto on April 28th, 77. And they reshuffled it quite a bit. Buddy Bell leads off at third. Frank Duffy at short second. Um, Rico Cardi designated hitter at third. And Dwayne Kuyper, the banjo hitting second baseman, batted cleanup in this game, which is extremely odd. Uh, Andre Thornton at first hit fifth. Johnny Grubb in left field sixth, Fred Kendall in, behind the plate batting seventh, Jim Norris in right field eighth, and Rick Manning who led off yesterday's game was in the nine hole tonight in center. Our pitching matchup tonight for the Brownies, Ray Culp, who uh, to me has been the surprise of this replay. He um, is 4-0 with a 1.89 ERA at this point in time. Uh, second only behind uh, ace Urban Shocker on the Brown staff. And opposing him will be Al Fitzmorris. So, uh, and Culp, as you can see, he was 14 and four in 1922, but uh, 393 ERA, so nothing too spectacular. But <clears throat> formalities out of the way, we are set to go. So let's roll Al Fitzmorris to face Jack Tobin here, and we are underway with one and a 10, and we are underway in big style as Jack Tobin takes the second pitch he sees deep over the left field wall, and the Browns have a quick 1-0 lead. And Tobin did hit 13 home runs in 1922, so a little bit of pop in that leadoff spot. Up next uh, will be a five and a seven to Frank Ellerby, and that's going to be a single. So the Browns are starting to uh, are starting this game in their uh, familiar offensive posture, which is they just keep coming. George Sisler up now, runner on first base, a three and a three, and that's fly out to right field. So Sisler goes down, one away. Cleanup batter Ken Williams, five and a seven, and Williams, that's going to be a single runner's advance one. So Fitzmorris having a little bit of a misfortune off of his card with two of the first four batters. Brings up Baby Doll Jacobson, a two and a seven. That's going to be a ground ball down to third base, over to second for one, and whipped over to Thornton, the 5 4 3 double play. So three hits, a leadoff homer gets the Brownies on the board, but Fitzmorris is able to get out of it without too much more damage, and it's 1-0 going into the bottom of the first inning. And Ray Colt 
See if he can continue his hot ways on the mound. A three and an eight, and Buddy Bell starts it off with a single for the Indians. So maybe some madness to the method of putting him on top of the order today. Frank Duffy up next, the shortstop. And three and a nine, that's gonna be a ground ball down to shortstop. Gerber up with it to McManus over to Sisler. And that's a six, four, three twin killing, so two outs. As the Brownies come back and Culp uh, throughout his starts actually has uh, seen a lot of fortune there in terms of his uh, defense behind him. That's a ground ball back to him. And that ends the first inning. We head to the top of the second, 1-0 Browns. And Marty McManus, the second sacker, leads off against Fitzmorris. And that's going to be a ground ball down to third base. Buddy Bell scoops it up, whips it over to Thornton, and one away. Hank Severide behind the plate. Severide, a uh, member of the 1914... Actually, no, I have him mixed up with Hank Gowdy. Strike that and forget it. Uh, nonetheless, Severide, a single back up the middle. So the Brownies have a base runner here in the second, and we're going to see if Severide's going to run. He won't try it. And Chick Shorten. Chick Shorten, our first fun fact. Uh, born Charles Shorten in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Lived his entire life there, a one and a seven. And Shorten draws a walk, so runners on first and second, one down. And Shorten, his uh, family actually owned a grocery store, and we'll get into that a little bit more his next at bat as Wally Gerber steps up. And three and a seven will be a ground ball down to Bell, and that's going to be another 5-4-3 double play. So Cleveland putting in some work defensively behind Fitzmorris, two double plays, and we head to the bottom of the second, 1-0 Brownies. And leading it off will be the cleanup hitter. It's almost funny to say that, Dwayne Kuyper. Not your stereotypical uh, person to occupy that role. And that is going to be a ground ball down to shortstop and Gerber. Get my basic fielding chart out, sorry. Just had the super advanced uh, due to the uh, satchel page replay. So down to shortstop to Gerbs, and that's going to be a 6-3 put out, one down. Next up, big Andre Thornton. Here comes a pitch to Thornton. And four and an eight, that's going to be double over a single, and Thornton singles into left field. So Culp again with base runners, and this has kind of been a trend. He has allowed some base runners, but always seems to get a key double play or strikeout or something else. One and eight, Johnny Grubb. And Grubb, he's going to single back up the middle. Uh, Thornton does not run well. He's going to hold up at second base. Not going to test the arm of Baby Doll Jacobson out in center. So the Indians, runners on first and second, and brings up catcher Fred Kendall. And Kendall, four and a three, and he draws a walk, so bases are loaded. And Culp once again in trouble as Fred Jim Norris steps up to the plate. And let's see if he can uh, pull Houdini, get out of this. Here comes a pitch. Six and a four, that's going to be a fly ball to center field. Baby Doll puts that away, but that will bring the run home from third as Andre Thornton lumbers home, and we are tied up at one. So, sack fly by Norris, and two away runners on first and second for Rick Manning. And the Indian center fielder waits for the pitch, and it'll be a ground ball down to second base, and McManus puts that away. So, three down on the 4-3 put out. But the Indians scratch back with a couple of hits and tie this up 1-1 as we're headed to the top of the third inning. And Fitzmorris, Jack Tobin led this game off with a home run, one and a five, and he's going to get a single this time. So Tobin making an early case for player of the game. If the Browns can hold on and win this, he's going to try and steal. Does not get the jump. Frank Ellerby up. 
and LRB one and an eight, and LRB singles, and 14 for Tobin to go to third. He's gonna try it, and he gets gunned down. So Ellerby single to center field, and Manning comes up throwing. So 8-5, and one down, Ellerby on first base, George Sisler up. And probably would have been good to hold Tobin there with Sisler batting. But four and an eight to Fitzmorris, and Fitzmorris a big strikeout, two down as Sisler, who does not fan much, goes down. Clean up batter Ken Williams, and a pitch to Williams is a 3-8, and that's going to be a single. So over to third goes Ellerby, and that would have put in a run had uh, Tobin practiced a little bit wiser base running. And Baby Doll Jacobson now steps up to face Fitzmorris. The pitch, two and a nine, and Fitzmorris swing and a miss. Gives him a heaping order of con queso, heavy on the K. And the Browns come up with three hits in the top of the third, but they can't put a run across, and we're heading to the bottom of the inning. Still tied at one. And this has kind of been the motif. The Browns will get their hits. They're still hitting about 330 as a team in this replay, which is amazing. And they have seven hits already in this one, but only one run to show for it. So Buddy Bell, that's going to be a ground ball down to Ellerby. Whips it over to Sisler, one down. Frank Duffy up, and the light hitting shortstop. He's going to draw a walk, so he trots down to first base. And Duffy, he is a decent base runner. If he can get a jump, he cannot. So he'll stay put. Designated hitter Rico Cardi. And that's going to be on the catcher's card. And behind the dish, Severide is a two. So two and an eight, safe at first on a dropped pop-up. So E2, down to second goes Duffy. And that has been something that has not really plagued the Browns in this replay, and that's shoddy defense. So we'll see if that comes back to haunt them. Runners on first and second now, one down. Clean up batter Dwayne Kuyper up. And 4 and 11 there, and that's going to be a strikeout. So Kuyper, the unconventional cleanup hitter, swinging like one and goes down on strikes. Two down. Runners on first and second for Andre Thornton. And that'll be a single. So with two outs, uh, Duffy will be a 16. He's going to try and come around to score, play at the plate, and he just gets in under the tag. So motoring over to third on the throw will be Cardi, and the Indians have taken a 2-1 lead on the RBI single by Andre Thornton. That brings up Johnny Grubb. Cole the pitch. And that'll be a ground ball back to the pitcher. Culp has it, whips it over to Sisler, and he is out of the inning. But the Brownies, they take advantage of a air and a walk, and that run will be unearned. Only one hit, but they take the lead 2-1 to one as we head to the top of the fourth inning. And ready to lead it off is second sacker, Marty McManus. Pitch from Fitzmorris. And that'll be a ground ball down to second base. And Kuiper, our super powerful cleanup batter, is an eight. So two and an eight makes the play, one down. Catcher Hank Severide up now. And Sevy, he singled his first time up. Here comes pitch. And it'll be a fly ball to center field. Manning puts out a way two down. And Chick Shorten up and back to the family grocery store. It was a business started by his father, uh, later nicknamed Short, or named Shorten Brothers. Uh, he and his two brothers ran that. And the store in Scranton, Pennsylvania was located at Oh, geez. I'll have the address. I did write it down. I know it is still there. It's 20... Uh, 
2239 Pitt Field, I believe, and it still stands at that location, and currently uh, a medicine shop, a pharmacy, occupies that uh, space. And then also on that same street, uh, 2226 uh, Pittman Avenue, is where um, Chick Shorten lived. His brother lived right next to the uh, grocery store at 2235, and both houses are still standing there as well. And uh, his third brother also lived on the street. So they, they pretty much all lived within a half block of the family business, and ran that well into their later years. So that out of the way, in case you're ever in uh, Scranton, PA and want to stop by the medicine shop at the location where Shorten Brothers Grocery wants to. Uh, one and a seven, and after all that, Shorten will draw a walk. So two out based on balls, and Chick is not going to be going anywhere. Brings us to the bottom of the order, Wally Gerber up. And Gerber gets a single, and short, and he runs a little bit, 1 to 15. He's going to try and go to third, and he is in there. So runners at the corner for Jack Tobin, and Tobin is 2 for 2 in this one, including a home run to lead off the ball game. Here comes the pitch, and 3 and a 6. That'll be down to shortstop, and the inning is over. As Frank Duffy takes care of that, so the Browns get a walk and a hit, leave two, and we're heading to the bottom of the fourth inning, still 2-1 Indians. And you would think after their dominating performance over the Red Sox and Yankees, they'd be rolling Cleveland, but that is not the case. Uh, one out of five, that's going to be a ground ball down to shortstop, and Gerber takes care of that one, one down. As Kendall heads back to the dugout, Johnny Grubb up. Grubb drove in a run with a sacrifice fly back in the second, the Indians first in this game. And that's going to be a single. Or I should say Jim Nor Norris, sorry. So Norris at first. And Norris, he has a little bit of wheelage to him, so he gets a jump. And he is an A stealer, so that's going to be a 1 to 15. And with Severide's arm, 1 to 12. And he's in there. Steal second base. So Rick Manning now has a runner in scoring position. And Colt, and that's going to be a single. And 16. Norris is going to try and come around and score, and he's in there easily. So the Indians playing dead ball style, stealing and taking the extra base as Manning with the RBI single. That makes it 3-1 Cleveland now. Manning down at first base, and he's going to see if he can get a jump. He does. Manning, however, is a B. So that's going to be only a 1 to 10, and he is gunned down, so he gets thrown out easily. And two down now for Buddy Bell. So one for two, Severide against Base Steelers, and Bell, I'm going to ground it down to Ellerby, whips it over to Sisler, and that ends the inning. But a couple more hits for the Indians and another run, and we are through four. They lead it three to one here. So still plenty of baseball left to play, but the Browns in a little bit of trouble as we start the fifth with Ellerby. And that's going to be a fly ball to center field. Rick Manning puts out away, one down. George Sisler, the batter. And Sisler's going to draw the base on balls there. Struck out his last time up, so Sisler down at first base now. And Sisler, he's a double A. He'll run on a roll of six or less, and he will be going. Arm adjustment for Kendall is a two, so one to 15, and Sisler has a stolen base. So Brownie's playing a little bit of, uh, whoops. John McGraw style baseball there as Ken Williams, and he's gonna fly out to right field. 
two down and sister stays put at second. That brings up baby doll Jacobson. Jacobson, the pitch from Fitzmorris. And baby doll swing and a miss. Ring him up, Johnny. Back to the dugout he goes. So that ends the inning. No hits a walk and one left. And we're going to the bottom of the fifth. We're halfway through this one. The Indians lead the Browns three to one. And could they take two in a row from this potent offensive lineup, especially given that their pitching overall is mediocre? As Frank Duffy set to lead it off against Colt. And pops him up to first base. Sisler takes care of that. One down. Rico Cardi, the vulnerable veteran, designated hitter. And that's going to be a single over line out. And he drives that into the outfield. So Rico down at first base. And Rico hopefully doesn't hit his steal number. He did not. That brings up our cleanup hitter, Dwayne Kuyper. He's grounded out to short and struck out. And that is going to be a potential double and does not get it. That's a single, though, back up the middle. And over to third goes Cardi. So Dwayne Kuyper puts runners at the corners. The Indians threatening again. They've scored once in each of the last three innings. Big Andre Thornton up. Here comes a pitch. And that's going to be a ground ball down to shortstop Gerber, who is a two. And three and a two. And he's going to get the out at first base. Runners advance. So Rico Cardi comes home to score on that. Down to second goes Kuiper. And on the ground out, Andre Thornton has an RBI, and the Indians now lead this one 4-1. to one. Johnny Grubb up. Here comes a pitch. And Grubb, swing and a miss. So Culp ends the inning there, but a couple of hits for the Indians and another run. And we are through five. The Indians lead this one 4-1 to one over the Brownies. And you know it's only a matter of time. The Browns actually have eight hits in this game, but have only been able to manufacture a single run out of that. So Marty McManus looking to get things going here. Here comes a pitch. And that'll be a single for McManus. So he leads off the inning in good form. And he is not going to try and steal. That brings up Hank Severide. And Seve takes a pitch, and it's going to be a ground ball back to first base. Runner's going to advance on that, so three unassisted. Big Andre Thornton on the put out. And Chick Shorten, during World War I, actually enlisted and served in the Navy. He did not deploy and uh, spent most of his time on the baseball team at his naval base. Shocker there, right? Here comes a pitch from Fitz. Morris, uh, five and a seven. And that's going to be a single. Runners advance one. So over to third goes McManus. And the Browns in business now with runners at the corner. And Shorten has reached base all three times. Two walks and a single. And Wally Gerber up. Gerber's one for two. He has hit into a double play, however. And we'll re-roll that. Went into one of the pockets on my pool table. So five to nine, that's going to be a ground ball down to second base. And again, the only play is to first. So McManus comes home. Down to second goes Shorten. And on the 4-3 put out, Gerber has an RBI. And the Brownies cut it in half to four to two, two outs. Runner on second base for Jack Tobin, who is two for three, including a home run. And Tobin, that's going to be a single. Runners advance two, so coming around to score is Shorten. And the RBI goes to Tobin, and it is now a 4-3 ball game. And just like we expected, here they come. Flying their way back into it as Ellerby steps up, and that's going to be a fly ball to right field, and that will end the inning. But the Brownies come up with three hits and a couple of runs. 
And we're heading to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's 4-3 Indians with the lead. And Culp, who has not had an outing on par with his uh, previous four starts in this replay, nonetheless is trailing only by a run now. It's five and a four. That'll be a fly ball to center field. And out there is Baby Doll Jacobson, who is a one. And seven and one gets to a one down. Next up will be Jim Norris. Here comes a pitch. And that'll be a fly ball to center field. Baby Doll again, two outs. Nice routine play there. And that brings up Rick Manning. Colt gets a sign and having his best inning of the game thus far. And that'll be a pop out to first base. Sisler puts that away. So three up, three down. And that is only, that's actually the first Three up, three down inning of either team in this game, and we are through six. Remains four to three Indians. But the heart of this uh, St. Louis order is set to do up here, and Sisler, a 420 hitter in 1922. And five to seven, and he's going to probably get a single there. He does. That is the fourth hit Fitzmorris has given up on that particular roll on his card if you're keeping score. So Sisler does not get the jump this time. So Williams up, nobody down, one on. Here comes a pitch. And 5 and 11, ground ball down to first base. And big Andre Thornton is a two, so he's not bad. Uh, nine and a two, and that's going to be a three-six-three three double play. So Thornton turns that nicely back over to first base, and there are two down, and that is the third double play that the Indians have recorded in this one. Brings up Baby Doll Jacobson, nobody on, two outs. Fitz Morris the pitch. And Baby Doll pops it up to shortstop, and circling underneath that is Frank Duffy, puts it away. So the leadoff single is wasted, and we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. It's 4 3 Indians at the old ball game here. Spoken word style as Culp set to face top of the order, Buddy Bell. And Hub Pruitt has started to uh, loosen up the wing in the Browns bullpen. And single for Buddy Bell, so maybe just as well there as they have a leadoff runner here, the Indians. Bell down on first base, and he is not a threat to steal, and he will not. Stays put for Frank Duffy. And the Duffster, he's going to lay down a bunt here. So seven batters thrown out by first baseman, runners advance one base. So we'll call that 3-4 and sacrifice hit. So Buddy Bell now sits in scoring position, one down for designated hitter Rico Cardi. And Colt digging deep, fires, and is going to walk him. Gives Cardi four wide ones, and that does put the double play in order again. But... The Indians, two runners on for Dwayne Kuyper, and Kuyper singled his last time up. Two and a nine, and he's going to single again. And Buddy Bell is a 14, and he's going to test him. Here he comes, the throw, play at the plate. That's right on the border. And <laughs> he's gunned down. We'll give it to him. So 7-2 on the put out there. And that's going to get Cardi over to third. So two outs now. Runners at the corners. And that could be a big play. As Ken Williams guns down Buddy Bell at home. Andre Thornton. One and a seven. And Thornton potential double here. Double over a fly ball. And that's just going to be a long loud out in the gap as Williams runs that down. So Colt dodges a huge bullet, a couple of hits and a walk, but Bell is thrown out at home and it remains four to three after seven innings here. As Marty McManus. 
Leads it off for the Brownies, a five and a seven. And that's that bad spot on Fitzmorris's card. And just squeaks that into the outfield. So the Indians, uh, they're going to get Jim Kern up again in the bullpen, their closer. And he has to uh, wait two batters here. So Fitzmorris brings it home to Severide. And five and a four, that's on the catcher's card. 14. And Kendall is a three. So 14 and a three pass ball followed by a foul out. So down to second goes McManus. And then F2 to Severide, and that brings up our uh, feature player of the game, Charles Chick Shorten, with a chance to tie this up, one down. And Shorten, after uh, baseball, he uh, after retiring as a player, he actually was a scout for the Cleveland Indians from 1950 to 59 and eventually retired from that as uh, the reason he gave was the area was constantly expanding for a scout, uh, which meant a lot of late night driving on unfamiliar roads and he didn't feel it was worth taking a chance. So he went back home to his uh, family business. Three and an eight to uh, Shorten. Can he come through here? And he's going to either tie or give the Browns a lead right on Q18, and that's a double. So the pass ball looms large, and our feature player of the game coming through big time. Chick Shorten, the RBI double, and it's knotted up at four. And Fitzmorris is going to get the hook. So seven and a third innings, and Jim Kern's going to come in for the Tribe. Kern is the closer, and he'll be asked to get the uh, final two outs in this inning with the runner in scoring position. And he'll be facing Wally Gerber now. One down, runner on second base, the pitch. And five and a six, and that's a walk. So runners on first and second now for the top of the order, and things do not look good. Cleveland has them right where they want them, or St. Louis does. Five and a seven, and probably would have been better off staying with uh, Fitzmorris, and that's a single, and that's going to bring home short with the go-ahead run. So over to third goes Gerber, and Tobin is now four for five on the day. That is his third RBI. So definitely uh, in line for player to game if this holds up. Five, four now Brownies, Frank Ellerby up. And that's going to be a strikeout, so Kern comes up big there. Two down for George Sisler, and Jim Kern could use another one of those, the pitch. And he's going to walk Sisler, and that's going to load the bases. So the sacks are jammed, and cleanup hitter Ken Williams coming up to the plate. Williams, baseball's first 30-30 man. It happened in 1922, 39 home runs, 37 steals. Here comes a pitch. And Kern, swing a miss. So he gets him swinging. And the Browns strand the bases loaded, but they do come up with two big runs to take the lead on three hits. A couple of walks sandwiched in there as well. So we're heading to the bottom of the eighth inning. Our score, St. Louis 5, Cleveland 4. And Hub Pruitt again is warming up furiously as Johnny Grubb steps up to the plate. Here comes a pitch, and ground ball down to second base. McManus takes care of it, one down. Fred Kendall up, and that's going to be a fly ball to right field, and under that is Tobin, two away. So Culp looking for his uh, second three up, three down inning of the game, facing Jim Norris. Pitch, and Norris lines it hard to first base, but Sisler with a nice stab, and it is three up, three down, and we're through eight, five, four. 
St. Louis with the lead as Baby Doll Jake has been set to go against Jim Kern here in the top of the ninth. And Baby Doll grounds it down to short bit shortstop. Duffy up with it over to Thornton, one away. Marty McManus set to hit. And threes all the way around. That's a ground ball down to Bell. Takes care of that. Two down. Brings up Hank Severide, the catcher. And Sevy today is one for four. And the pitch, sixes. And that's a single. Which means we get to uh, have our feature player of the game, Chick Short, and come up one more time. And Shorten waits for the pitch from Kern, three and a seven, and that'll be a ground ball down to first base that Thornton takes care of. So three unassisted on that. The Brownies get a hit, but do not extend their lead, and we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. It is five to four. And that's going to be the day for Culp. We're going to bring in Hub Pruitt here in a save situation. So Pruitt will look to make the save here, and we'll get our final numbers here on Culp real quick. So he goes eight innings. Gives up 10 hits, 4 runs. Only 3 of those runs are earned, however. Uh, he walks 1, 2, 3. Walks 3 and strikes out 2. And does not give up a home run. So Pruitt's going to try and nail down the 15th win of this replay for the Brownies. Here comes a pitch to Manning. And Rick, or Rick Manning, one and a seven. That's going to be a ground ball down to Ellerby, one down. And back to the top of the order, Buddy Bell steps in. And Bell, how big is uh, his getting thrown out at the plate back in the seventh inning looming now? Six and a three to Bell, and that's going to be a fly ball to right field out where Tobin roams. And 17 and a two. And Tobin, a nice running catch there. So two away, and the Brownies are one out away. And yet another comeback win for the St. Louis crew. Six and a nine, Pruitt ends it in style. Swing and a miss, sit him down. Duffy goes down on strikes, three up, three down, and that is the ball game. The St. Louis Browns claw back from a 4-1 to one deficit to take this one 5-4. to four. And player of the game, not much question there, has to be the Brownies' leadoff batter right fielder, Jack Tobin. Tobin went 4-5 for five on the day, three singles in a home run, scored a run, drove in three, and was the catalyst of this uh, Brownies' offense all day long. So props to him for the player of the game. And final line score here. The Browns, they uh, got a slew of hits. They should have probably scored seven, eight runs or more in this game. But their final line score, five runs on 16 hits. And that 330 team average is only going to go up. One error. The Indians, four runs on 10 hits, no errors. And your winning pitcher is Ray Colt. He goes to 5-0. Oh. Hub Pruitt gets a save. And losing pitcher is going to be tough luck Al Fitzmorris as Jim Kern cannot get it done in relief for the Indians. So the Brownies will at least uh, retain their cushion of 3.5 in first place at this point in the season. And we will be back uh, next game for the channel. We'll be uh, back to our payoff pitch, Fergie Jenkins replay. It will be his sixth start of the season for the 1969 Cubbies. So I hope you enjoyed this one. And just a quick look at our final score sheet there. And again, Southpaw-itis. I'm a sloppy rider. I don't care. So there you see uh, the Brownies. 
They have had eight hits through four innings, but only a single run. And they were set down in the fifth without the benefit of a hit, but then uh, strung together another eight hits over the final four innings. They just keep coming at you. So Shorten, our uh, feature player of the game, we learned a little bit about his family life, his family business, uh, service in the military, and his time as a major league scout. And uh, one last fact, he um, was probably one of the uh, hitting stars. He had a uh, batting average over 500 in World Series play. And as a member of the Red Sox, he was a platoon player along with Tilly Walker in the 1916 series. And, you know, kind of a concept that uh, was not all that common back in the day, but it was utilized in that case by the uh, Red Sox manager. So our last fun fact about Shorten. So there you have it, another one in the books. And again, thanks for watching and subscribe or uh, thumbs up the video if you will. Any comments, suggestions, be happy to uh, see if we can implement them. And that goes for this replay as well as the uh, Satchel page and also our payoff pitch uh, Fergie Jenkins replay. So until next time, have a great night everyone. Keep rolling for the fences and we'll see ya.